Welcome back to Vintage HLC Show and Tell. Today we're looking at Americana. I talked about this line a little bit in video number 18, so I'll put a link to that in the description for this one. But this is an underglaze print line that was made by Homer Laughlin for Montgomery Wards. It was produced from roughly 1940 to the mid-1950s. It has a 15-year run. And it's made up of Courier and Ives prints. So each piece has a different print and the subject matter is listed on the back in special markings that are also under the glaze. Now this is a combination set. Pieces were picked up from existing lines. You've got some Brittany, there's Empress, there's Willow. Uh, we even have a piece of Century for the square plate. A cable egg cup. The teapot and the demi tasse cup and saucer were made specifically for this line. I believe those are the only pieces that were made for this. Everything else comes from an existing shape. So what I want to do today is just look at some of these different patterns. And before I do that, we'll look at a little advertisement. Or this is a page from a catalog. This is from uh, Montgomery Ward's uh, Fall and Winter 1943-1944. And it shows the Americana line. And we see the teapot, the demi tasse cup and saucer, the cup and saucer, some flatware. There's our cable leg cup and some more serving pieces on the bottom. So I printed out some prints online. Most of these come from the Springfield Museum website. So I need to give them a little bit of credit. So this one's the road, winter. And this is from 1853. And this print was used on the nappy. Now, when Frederick Reed selected these prints, the art department had to take uh, these examples and they either had to shrink them or crop them or, or do whatever they needed to do in order to get them to fit the particular piece. So here we have it on the nappy. Again, this is the road winter. And here's how it looks like in its underglazed print form. And the special marking says the road winter, an American subject from Courier and Ives prints made by Homer Lachlan. There's a date code underneath that. I think it says 1948, if I'm not mistaken. And each piece is going to have the special leaf border. Our next one is the Western Farmer's Home. And this was on the 9-inch plate. And this comes from 1852. So here's how it looks on the 9-inch plate. Again, they had to manipulate the print to fit the well of this particular piece. And there's your special marking. The Birthplace of Washington. This was on the covered sugar. This is from 1872. Uh, it also says uh, the Birthplace of Washington at Bridges Creek, Westmoreland County, Virginia, February 22nd, 1732. So if we look at the sugar bowl, there we have the print. The other side of the sugar bowl has Franklin's experiment. And we can see that here on the printout. This is from 1876. Franklin's experiment, June 1752, demonstrating the identity of lightning and electricity from which he invented the lightning rod. And there we see it on the sugar. The boy in the picture, that's uh, his son, William. And this marking will have both. Let's see. So at the top it says, Birthplace of Washington, and then at the bottom, Franklin's Experiment. So if you have two subject matters, both of them are going to be listed in that special marking. Next we have Maple Sugaring. This is used on the Oval Baker. And we see it here. Harper's Ferry. This comes from about 1857 to 1860, according to the museum's website. This was used on the 11-inch platter. Now, Harper's Ferry is in West Virginia, but when the print was created for Courier and Ives, um, it was still part of Virginia, because West Virginia was not a state yet. That's pre-Civil War. So we see a view of Harper's Ferry, Virginia, um, they just kept that title because that's what it was called originally, even though Harper's Ferry today is part of West Virginia. 
And this one is, comes from 1856, the Railroad Suspension Bridge near Niagara Falls. And that is on our 11, or no, this is the 13 inch platter. And we see the print and how it looks like in its underglaze form. We see the railroad bridge, the people on the rock face. Now, they shortened the title on this one. It just says Suspension Bridge, Niagara Falls. I don't have a printout for the one in the back. This is a Thanksgiving scene. That's on a 16-inch platter. And next we have a winter scene. This is on the 9-inch platter, or your sauce boat stand, or your pickle. This is one of the pieces that does multiple duties. We talked about pickles and liners before. Uh, this one's called Winter in the Country. And there were several Courier and Ives winter in the countries. This one's the old grist mill. Other prints include getting ice and uh, a cold morning, but they chose the old grist mill for this piece. Washington's family, or just Washington family, that's on the teapot. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a very good example here. This is a pretty weak uh, transfer. In the print, it's mentioned that this is his nephew and his niece in the picture, but uh, according to the website, that was misidentified. Those are actually his grandchildren. On the other side of the teapot is Washington at Mount Vernon. Again, both are listed in your back stamp. And we have two prints here. This one's from 1861, it's husking, and this one's from 1852, partridge shooting. Now, partridge shooting is on the lid of the casserole. And again, you can see how this print was modified to fit. They even had to make room for the finial. And husking is on the base, or the inside of the base. So all these figures had to be, you know, brought together to form this underglaze print. And yet again, we see both in the marking. So huskings listed on top and partridge shooting on the bottom. Uh, there's a date code underneath this one. It, I think it says 1944. Home Sweet Home. We'll get to that one in a minute because that's on the dinner plate. Well, I want to look at the others real quick that I don't have print, printouts of. The uh, square plate which comes from Century. This is the only piece of century I, I know of that was not done in vellum. It was just left blank so that they could put the underglaze print and then give a clear glaze. This is uh, Landing of the Pilgrims, I believe. Yes, Landing of the Pilgrims, uh, 1620. A six-inch plate. I think this is Hudson, Hudson River. The egg cup. It lists the title inside the bottom portion across the continent, and you see the train going across the west. Let's see if we can get that train. Where is the train? There it is. Creamer has, let's see, the Declaration of Independence. The teacup and saucer has view of New York. And the demitasse cup and saucer has view of San Francisco. So that's, I assume that's San Francisco Bay. That's probably New York Harbor. And let's see the gravy. Oh, the gravy has harvest on one side, and the other one's preparing for market, I believe. Yes. And both titles in the bottom, preparing for market, listed up top, and uh, harvest at the bottom. Now, going back to Home Sweet Home, before I do that, I, I should mention there are a couple pieces that I have, have, have not shown, like the chop plate, which has Rocky Mountains, the 7-inch plate I haven't shown because I don't have one, and I don't have the cream soup cup. That's basically it for the assortment. So now we'll look at this dinner plate, home sweet home. We have the cattle and the, uh, the sheep on either side. They're getting water out of the stream. We've got the house in the background with the couple, and here's what it looks like on the dinner plate. And we see the marking, Home Sweet Home. I wanted to focus this one on particular because recently I was able to pick up a couple pieces 
from a seller in Chicago um, some trial piece, trial pieces, pardon me. Here's one in blue, but it's the same home sweet home pattern. Uh, really nice details in this, nice shading on this compared to the, the pink or red version. And it has its special marking as well, but it's in blue, of course. So home sweet home. And the date code is 1939, so this is right before it went in production. So clearly it's a trial piece. There are some reference numbers and identification numbers on the back. And then there's a brown version. Again, there's some uh, identification marks for the brown stain. I mean, that's basically what you're doing when you're making these underglaze prints. You're, you're staining the bisque square and then giving it a clear glaze. And we see Home Sweet Home, Courier Knives Prints, Homer Lachlan, and Brown. So I thought these were really fun pieces. Um, and it highlights one of the reasons why I like to collect Homer Lachlan so much. You just never know what you're going to find. Um, so I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, Americana, Courier and Knives, Montgomery Wards, and Homer Lachlan. Again, this was made from roughly 1940 to the mid-1950s.